Hello my friends, my name is Rick. Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to share with you how I built a heavy duty metal foundry. Let's get started. First up, let's do a brief overview of the parts. So first up is uh, some four inch locking casters so I can uh, move this uh, freely inside and out of the shop. Another thing I picked up at uh, Logan Steel was this uh, 5 16 inch thick uh, square tubing measuring 12 by 12 by 17 inches long and that'll form the main body of the uh, of the foundry in addition to that I also picked up some um, some steel plate one for the top that's 12 by 12 by 5 16 inch thick and then uh, I found this plate uh, for the bottom 13 by 15 by by 3 8 so I think those will work out well the other thing I found at the steel store was this 7 inch long 4 and a half inch pipe and that will be the loading tube that will that will affix to the top where we can load cans and other metals uh, as the forge is going more to come on that another thing I picked up were these insulating fire bricks and uh, I picked up 13 soft insulating fire bricks and though they're they're good up to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit and that's what that 28 stamp is on them those were about 575 a piece and then the uh, four hard bricks which were about three bucks a piece I also picked up some of this Imperial high temperature you know cement it's good up to 2700 degrees I've used this for my forge it's worked well and so I thought I'd uh, you know use it again also in my forge th th there are two burners that I've used and those propane burners are from Matthewson metals and I've had such good luck with them I decided to you know continue to use them here for this foundry and uh, you can find them on eBay and uh, reasonably be priced uh, well built uh, and they work out just just fine the tip there is uh, stainless steel so it helps uh, preserve those so overall a pretty good deal I also wanted to pick up a, a burner mount 2 inch square by 3 sixteenths to help hold the burner and then of course uh, the crucible this is a number six it has a capacity of eight kilograms so this will be considered an eight kilogram foundry it's a pretty good sized uh, crucible for sure overall the total cost is about three hundred dollars and so let's get started first up I have to cut with my plasma cutter a portion of that uh, square tubing for the top and I'm using the Lotus LTP 5000 D I found that to be a terrific uh, plasma cutter this is cutting through 5 16 no problem and I'm using a straight edge there to just make sure that or to help out that uh, I keep the cut straight obviously that's sped up a bit it goes uh, I'm going a lot slower than what it's showing overall it did a really nice job and there wasn't that much to clean up now I need to cut a hole in the top for the loading tube that I mentioned before so it's just as simple as getting it in the center and I'll use the plasma cutter for this as well now, I don't have a circle cutter I wish I did but uh, I'm just freehanding it and actually it turned out uh, pretty well you know if you take your time and uh, get into a comfortable position uh, you can cut uh, well, cut pretty straight with this
Okay, so while I had the plasma cutter out, I also needed to cut a hole for the um, for the mount for the burner. It's just a simple square hole. It's so easy to use, much easier than a you know metal cutoff wheel on a grinder. And there we go. Easy peasy. All right, well, it's welding time. So I'm taking the top off there so I can expose my uh, all those areas for clamping. I'm going to weld the top up. It's just uh, so convenient to be able to, uh, you know, clamp an object like that, all different areas. It's, it's, it's worked out pretty great. So here I am, I'm just going to tack the sides. First, and then of course uh, weld up everything uh, once it's all tacked in. Thank goodness for that hood. I've got a hood that helps me uh, extract all the fumes. It's about uh, 20 degrees out today, so uh, it's great to be inside the shop and be able to weld. So there it is, all finished up. Uh, welds, per welds turned out uh, really well and uh, pretty happy with that. So now I need to uh, fix that uh, loading tube into the top. But I decided I could use a flange. So I'm up over to the uh, forge here area and uh, I'm gonna make a couple of flanges for both the loading tube as well as the burner mount. And I just got some one inch by three sixteenths flat stock and uh, we're gonna just, uh, here's my jig for bending. Get this stuff heated up, clamp it in, and pull it around. Just as simple as that. Right to the shape of that uh, loading tube. Just doing some fine tune adjustments here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Clean it up. And there we have it. And I'm doing the same here with the um, burner holder, or the burner mount. Took a couple of heats, but it also, you know, turned out pretty well. And uh, there we go. It's a lot of fun. It's nice to be in the forge, and, and it's great to have a forge for making parts just like this. Because where are you going to buy something like this? So now we're back in the shop and time to weld things up. So we're going to put this uh, flange on and a little bit of hocus pocus. We're going to have this thing, there it is, all welded up. So the top is done. Looking good. Now, next steps is to weld up the base. There's that 3 8 inch plate. Get the top over. Now I'm using my Everlast PowerArc 200 ST welder. It's a uh, stick and TIG and it works great. And in this case and well throughout the whole uh, I'm using 7018 uh, Hobart welding rod. Uh, eighth inch thick. It's been working out great. There's a uh, welded the flange in for the burner holder and those welds turned out uh, turned out pretty well. So that's a lot of progress in one day. And it's looking pretty good so far. So 
So the next day I added a hinge for the top. And the whole thing with this uh, hinge system was to try to come up with something that would be safe, that I could stand on the side of this uh, foundry and open up with just a piece of 5 8 inch rod that I can, it'll be a little longer than that one, but I can uh, insert it into that uh, square stock and, uh, and open up the lid to either extract the crucible or to add some more materials or, you know, scrape off the, um, some of the, uh, the contaminants that float on the top. And then I can put it back together without touching or getting near uh, the foundry because it's going to be pretty hot. So I liked it. Just used some scrap to put it together. I also uh, drilled and tapped uh, some holes for the burner, to mount the burner. Those are 3 8 so that should be plenty sturdy enough. Here's the burner. This will give me the, you know, the option to replace that burner if needed or to uh, move it in or out uh, just to make sure I can do some fine, uh, you know, I want to fine tune adjust where that burner, you know, sticks out once I get the insulation in there. There's that little sleeve that controls the airflow. Yeah, that's going to work out well. There's another shot of it. Another set of welds. I'm, I'm very happy with that 7018 Hobart um, electrodes. They're great. So here we are. We're over back, and uh, we did put the wheels on at the bottom to move this thing around. And uh, there we've put in uh, some initial fire bricks at the bottom and at the and along the sides. We'll get those all mudded up and uh, with the cement uh, later. But that's uh, that gives you a sense of how the crucible fits and. I'm going to have to insulate the top of it as well. American is the way to close it up. Nice and safe. So overall, guys, listen, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, especially if you're going to be building yourself one. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, I wish everyone uh, have a great holiday.